Hello and welcome once again to Facebook Live with Lynn and Craig. Happy New Year. My happy name's New Craig. Year. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say Happy New Year. You have to say Happy New Year. It's 2021. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Craig. I'm from mansioningles.com where you can find courses and lots of material to improve your English and also from the podcast inglespodcast.com where Reza and I my colleague and friend podcast every week with free material for you to improve your English. And with me is Lynn. That's right. Uh -huh. And uh, happy new year to Razor too, because I haven't seen Razor for a long time. But I don't think he'll be watching this. He'll not be watching, <laughs> but you can say happy new year to him. It's a great podcast, everybody. So go and listen to the English podcast because it is really good. And I do listen to the podcast. <laughs> okay. So uh, my name is Lynn and I'm from putitlikethis.com. And uh, I also offer online teaching. Um, but I, I do very specific teaching. So if you have a specific objective in mind, like an exam or a presentation, or you're writing articles, I can help you find your voice in English. So that's the aim. If you go to my website, you can find more detail about the kind of courses that I make for people. Okay. And it's, lo it's lovely to be back with you. And it's been, we've had a long break. We're, we're feeling <laughs> rested and, and ready to go. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, what's the topic today? Well, we, we've got a word. We have a word which looks really easy. The word is light. And so everybody thinks, oh, great, we'll have a nice light lesson to start the course of the year. But um, uh, the word light is quite complex. So that's why we're dedicating an entire class to the word light because there are many meanings for it and there are many many different expressions is that right that's right um <laughs> before we get into different uses of light let's say a quick hello to people who are just joining us live on facebook hello fabiana happy new year carlos is here Gemma, happy new year Gemma. hi, hi. <laughs> and katie is here and mm -hmm. Katia from Costa Rica. Hello to oh, all of you. Lovely. And hello uh -huh. if you're watching the replay. We won't forget people who are watching after the fact on Facebook. So thank you for spending time with us. So let's look at uses of the word light and hopefully help you with some vocabulary, expanding your vocabulary. What's the first meaning, Lynn? Okay, so the first meaning of light is the one that probably everybody, I think, knows, and it means illumination. So a light is a bright light, something that, for example, the, 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 the brightest star in the world is the sun, and the sun gives us light. And the opposite of light, of course, is dark, okay? So we have the word light. Now, we have... Um, quite a few expressions to do with light because there can be natural light which comes from the sun and of course we have artificial light i don't think you can see it here in my room but on the ceiling i have a light so you have artificial light and then of course we've got a few verbs that go with that so you can turn on the light and the opposite is to turn off the light that's when you switch it on the wall OK, so here are some words that we have all to do with light when it means illumination. We use the adjective bright light. So if the light is very, very glaring and it hurts your eyes, that is a bright light. It's one that is very, very illuminating. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have uh, the opposite of bright light would be dim light. Right. So dim light when there's not a lot of light. Now, I think I can demonstrate this really easily because I actually have a ring light in my computer setup. I have a ring light. Do you know what a ring light is, Craig? Is it around your camera? Because I know there are LED mm -hmm. lights that you can put around the camera so it shines on your face and the camera's coming through the middle. Is that That's what it is? That's right. That's what it is. And do you know what it does? Do you know what it does, Craig? A ring light makes you look younger. So watch this. <laughs> Here I am, 21. Let me turn. And I have a very bright light in my face, right? It makes me look younger. Remember that because you've got to compliment me. Now, if I turn my ring light off. Oh, you look 22 now. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely aged you at least a year. That's right. So that's well done. What a wonderful compliment, uh, Craig. Very good. You haven't forgotten the lesson on compliments. Compliments. So at the moment, this is a dim light. It's not very bright. And if I put it on, you'll see now that I have a very bright light. Okay. So bright light and dim light. We have Christmas lights, of course, the ones that you put on your Christmas tree or the ones that we have in the streets that you look up. Do you want to continue, Craig? Yes, we can also use lights with the phrasal verb uh, light up, to light up. And it's a phrasal verb that you can separate. So you can put the object in the middle. You can light up the room or you can light the room up. So if you put more lights in the room, you light up the room. You can light up the sky. For example, if there are fireworks, fuegos artificiales, then you light up the sky. Oh, one more thing about the verb to light. It is irregular. So the past is lit, L-I-T. The fireworks lit up the sky yesterday. And the past participle is also lit, L-I-T. So light, lit, lit, irregular verb. And you can light up my life. If you are in love with your partner, you can say that my partner lights up my life. And I also your I, children, when the children are being nice, then they light up your life as well. It's not just yes. your partner, your children too. <laughs> that, that, that's true. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, when I was very young, um, and I had, not very young, when I was in my 20s, most of my girlfriends didn't used to come in and light up the room. They came in and lit up a cigarette, usually. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, can, you can light up, you can light a cigarette and you can light up the room. Most of my ex-girlfriends came in the room and lit up a cigarette, not the room. Uh -huh. um, at first light is dawn when the sun starts to rise in the morning and you get a little bit of light, you can say at first light. Mm -hmm. For example, let's get up early tomorrow at first light and do some exercise. You can hold something against the light. If you can't see something very well, you hold up something against the light. At my age with my glasses, sometimes I can't read small text very well. So I, used, I usually go to the window and I hold the text up against the light so I can read it easily. And also a red light area is, well, what's a red light area, Lynn? <laughs> You're asking me. <laughs> well, you used to live in Germany. I think they have red light areas in all Germany. All over, yes. And I actually always had my flats were always very close to the red light areas. The uh, red light area... Um, is actually the area of a city where prostitution is is uh, is allowed, and of course there are some in Germany. It's legal, um, and in the Netherlands it's re legal. I think in Amsterdam they have a very famous red light district, which a lot mm -hmm. of tourists go to to look at. So a red light area is the area where prostitution. Um, usually occurs okay or where you can um and and it can also be dangerous is right carlos has just said hello carlos he's just said it can mean danger as well yeah it can be a dangerous a place light. to walk around mm -hmm. it can be uh-huh more people are joining us live minia happy new year to you and elena's with us hello elena so hello mm -hmm. to everybody who's who's recently joined Ro from madrid is is back again lovely to see all of you again mm -hmm. So I hope so far you're still with us because light in those senses, I think is pretty obvious. Yeah. Most people learn the word light when they're beginners. Yeah. Put the light on. Okay. Turn the light off. All right. Let's, let's move on to compound nouns for a while, because if you put an adjective and a noun together, we can make what's called a compound noun. So for example, light switch is a noun made up of two words but really the first word light is describing the switch what kind of switch is it interruptor is a switch what kind of switch it's a light switch it turns the light on and off so that adjective really becomes part of 
the noun. So we say it's a compound noun. Um, light bulb is the glass that you screw into the ceiling and then you turn on the light switch and the light bulb lights up. There's that phrasal verb again, to light up. What's a lighthouse, Lynn? Ah, lighthouse. Now, they're, they're lovely because they're usually on the coast. And the lighthouse is that very big tower. It's usually white. And at the top, it has a revolving light. And that light illuminates the ocean. And they usually um, do that. Obviously, they put the light on on the lighthouse at night. And it helps the ships in the ocean to navigate so they know where the land is so they don't get too close to land because maybe there are rocks and things like that that's a lighthouse and of course you see those wherever there's a coast usually in the world you will find a lighthouse Hima says uh, a faro that's right that's a lighthouse exactly okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right and then uh, daylight is the uh, the light that we have during the day. Yeah. Now there's a, we we often use, and that's also a compound now. Daylight, the light of day. But we sometimes have an expression as well. We say in broad daylight, and in broad daylight means in the middle of the day when it was light and everybody saw things happening. Right. That would be daylight. Then we have traffic lights. You see those on the roads. The traffic lights tell you in the car when you can stop or when you can go. So a red traffic light means stop. A green traffic light means go. Then we have two types of lights that you find on the car. You have the headlights, which are at the front of the car. And at the back of the car, you have the brake lights. They show you when you are braking the car. When the car is slowing down and coming to a stop, that is the brake. You're braking, and that's a brake light. And it tells the car behind you that you are slowing down. Mm -hmm. So headlights. What, and what kind lights. of what kind of lights do you prefer, Lynn, at home? Do you prefer bright lights in the house, artificial uh, lights, or do you uh -huh. prefer kind of lights that give the the house a nice atmosphere maybe very soft lighting quite well, dim and quite dark yeah well they have now because of the um they have new light bulbs of course that save energy and those light bulbs that save energy when they were first uh, invented they gave off a white light mm -hmm. um and on the on the packets it says white light and if you put those white lights in, then the light is very, very bright. It's like the ring light that I have on my face right now. So it, it, it makes everything very, very clear, very bright, but it's not very warm. And then because of that, I, I hated when the first, when the first uh, energy efficient light bulbs came out, we changed them all. And the entire house looked like a hospital for me <laughs> and you i had to put like, sun, sun cream on to stop you yeah, getting sunburned so in there cold that i yeah, hated yeah. it and so we changed them because then they started to bring out a version that gives a yellow light and the yellow light is called a warm light mm -hmm. and um, and i prefer the warm lights in my house i hate it when it's too bright obviously on the online classes now it has to be bright but in my house, I prefer warm lights and dim lighting. I only have white lights in the kitchen, so I can see what I'm cooking. So you haven't what gone, you haven't gone all high tech with that new smart lighting on your mobile phone, where you can put different colours in the light bulbs oh and have red and blue <laughs> and adjust everything from an app on your phone. You haven't gone that way. No, yet. Have you got that, Craig? Are you no, more modern? No, I haven't. But I've always I've always been a big fan of dimmer switches. D I W M E R. Dimmer to dim is to turn down the intensity of the light to create a nice ambiance, a nice atmosphere. And I had one in the living room and it broke. It stopped working. But this goes back into when I was younger, and I thought that to 
create a nice atmosphere if I asked a young lady back to my flat. I could dim the lights, put on some soft music, and create a nice romantic atmosphere. So from those days, I, uh, I've always liked dimmer lights, but now but we, we can see we, we can see it. it didn't work, Craig, because when you dim oh. the lights, the girls lit up their cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it didn't achieve the right effect, I don't think, did it? <laughs> no, it, it, it didn't. We've got some comments coming in the chat room. Um, yes, Carlos says semaphoro, traffic lights, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Minia is asking about highlights. Ah, highlights. highlights. Two meanings come to mind with highlights. You can have highlights in your hair. Like if you have dark hair, you can have blonde highlights. These are not blonde highlights. This is gray. This is my age. But younger people can have highlights, a different color in their hair. And you can also have highlights in a film or a television show. And that means the best bits or the best pieces of the show. For example, the highlights of this Facebook Live might be five minutes of the best parts, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So they're compound nouns, yeah? They're compound nouns. Let's go to the next group of vocabulary idioms idioms mm -hmm. do you think lynn we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of the coronavirus now that we have a vaccine can you see the light at the end of the tunnel a little i can see a little light at the end of the tunnel so that idiom to see so it's a metaphor of course a tunnel is for example when you're in the train if the train goes through the mountains they make an opening through the mountain and that's the tunnel right so you can imagine that metaphor if you're in a train going through a tunnel it gets very dark because there's no light and at the end of the tunnel that's when you start to see the daylight again and that gives you hope. And this is the metaphor here. If you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it means that you are in a little depressing place at the moment. Maybe you're in a, a, a time that you're not having so much fun and you're not, things are not very positive. They're quite negative. But if you see a light at the end of the tunnel, it means you see a way out of your bad situation you see you see hope so to see light at the end of the tunnel means to feel hope again and um yeah i do see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel but i still think we have a couple of months to go yet. yeah I think early maybe. early days i agree but there is some light to, there is some light there i think at the end uh -huh. of the tunnel I if hope you so. If you put somebody in a bad light, you make them look bad. For example, I, mentioning no names, but if a politician does something really bad, <laughs> that puts them in a bad light. Of course, the opposite is to put somebody in a good light to say positive things about someone. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes them more attractive and, and, and better. So you see, my ring light because it makes me look a little bit younger. <laughs> it puts me in a good light as well. <laughs> okay. if, you, if you see the light, you suddenly realize something. Imagine you don't understand something and someone explains it to you very well. You can say, ah, now I, I can see the light. There's a realization. There's a revealing of something, an understanding, suddenly you see the light. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. How are we doing with, with comments? With comments. Um, so I think Christine says that the to, to the light at the end of the tunnel is a similar idiom in Spanish. Ver la luz al final del tunnel. Yep. Hi, and, Christine. Uh -huh. And then um, uh, Carlos is saying a solu solution at the end of a problem, yeah, to the light exactly. at the end of the tunnel. So it's very similar to mm -hmm. Spanish in that sense. But I think the idiom to be in a good light, to put somebody in a good light or to put somebody in a bad light, I'm not sure if that's an idiom in Spanish, is it, that, that phrase? 
I can't I, think of anything in Spanish. I can't think of any equivalent. If you if you can think of an equivalent expression for that, please mm -hmm. write it in the chat room. But let's change meanings now because up to now we've been speaking about luth, the meaning of light and the different uses of light with luth. But of course it also means ligero in um, Spanish. So it can mean something that is not heavy or mm -hmm. not severe or not strong. So let's look at that meaning for a while and some collocations with ligero, the ligero meaning of light. For example, you can wear a light jacket if the weather's not cold, if it's spring or autumn and it's sunny. Maybe you need a jacket, but not a heavy jacket. So you put on a light jacket. Mm -hmm. So it means it's not heavy in that sense, because in the winter you have a thick jacket and it weighs a lot. So to, to have a light jacket, it's just a jacket, but it's quite thin. Uh -huh. You can also have a light bag. You know, when you travel at the airport, um, you have to put your heavy bag in the baggage. You have to check it in. But you are allowed sometimes hand luggage on the plane. And sometimes people say instead of hand luggage, you are allowed a light bag. That means one that doesn't weigh a lot. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the drinks, Coca-Cola light, right? And, um, and it's interesting because you have written L-I-G-H-T there. Uh, Only which because is, I, that's how it is. That, is that how how it's, it's it might be how it's written, but there are many foods and drinks. Of course, Coca Cola Light is a type of Coca Cola that is not heavy in sugar. It has very very low sugar or no sugar. I think Coca Cola Light it uses saccharin, and um, they often talk about light types of food and drink now those are those are foods that are not heavy in calories right so they're not fattening and they either spell it l-i-g-h-t which is the traditional way of spelling light but often you see now a new spelling which is l-i-t-e mm -hmm. and that spelling is on a lot of products but it only means that it's not heavy in calories basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to continue? Light yeah, work? You, light work. You can have heavy work and light work. An example of heavy work is maybe working in construction with heavy machinery, maybe lifting boxes or, or heavy things or digging to dig his cover. So this kind of work is quite heavy physical work. Or you can do light work, which is possibly what we working do. with... <laughs> With, with talking to a camera <laughs> or, or correcting some writing from students, that's light work, isn't it? It's not too heavy. It's not too physically demanding. It's, it's light work. It's light and work. what I'm doing now at my age is light exercise. I'm not playing tennis. I'm not playing football. I'm not running on the beach. I'm going for a walk. Maybe I'm doing a few push-ups. I'm doing light exercise, so nothing very... Um, nothing very serious. Mm -hmm. Are you a light sleeper, Lynn, or do you sleep I, um, quite? No, I'm a very heavy deeply. sleeper. I'm a sound sleeper. Now, that means that when you sleep, you can have a light sleep or a heavy sleep. When you have a light sleep, that means that you wake up many, many times. So during the night, maybe you keep waking up. If there's a tiny little noise, um, that will make you wake up. Uh, that's a light sleeper. And a heavy sleeper, sometimes we also say sound sleeper. Or deep a sleeper. Sound, or, or a, a deep, deep sleeper. sleeper. A deep sleeper, sound sleeper, heavy sleeper. That means that you, you have to have something very big happen for you to yeah. wake up. And fortunately, I'm quite lucky. I'm quite a, I'm quite a, a sound sleeper. I'm not a light sleeper. Me too. Um, yeah, you too. Yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I, I sleep. I sleep quite well. When I do eventually get to sleep, I sleep. I'm a heavy sleeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a, a bit of a headache, um, maybe you've you've drunk too much beer, or or you're you've been in a noisy environment, and you have a headache, but it's not very serious. You can call it a light headache 
And my mum never had light headaches. She always had splitting headaches. She's got, oh, I've got a splitting headache. To split is partir. It's like your head is being split in half. So there's a light headache, there's a headache, and there's a bad headache or a splitting headache. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at the uh, the comments. Christine asks, is light more informal? Um, well, in, in if I was to write light, I would never write it L-I-T-E. I think it's more of a, it, it came from America. And yeah. I think it was more of a sort of marketing um, thing. Like sometimes they write the preposition for, they write the number four. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that. So in, it's not something that I would write, and I, I wouldn't advise you to write it as a student, but it's more of a marketing initiative, and they try to, to make a brand name with L-I-T-E. Um, it's to try to make it stand out more, I think. Mm -hmm. Another question from Carlos. Light is synonymo de poco. Livin, liviano? Liviano. Uh -huh. I've got suave. I'm not sure what that means. It's like something oh. soft. Uh -huh. I think when he says de poco, maybe he means like not uh, severe, not extreme. When it's a headache, yes. And also, uh -huh. as, as Lynn said before, with calories. So poco calorias will be like a, a light meal, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Something that's not very heavy on mm -hmm. calories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be that, Carlos. Yeah, yeah, because we come up now with light lunch. Now, for example, a heavy lunch is if you have starters, and then maybe you have a steak, a big steak with lots of potatoes, and then you have maybe a salad, and then maybe you have um, a big chocolate cake for dessert, mm, coffee and mints yeah so for example at christmas we all had heavy lunches i'm sure at christmas we all ate heavy meals but a light lunch is something that is not very heavy and it's something that you can eat quite quickly so for example like if salad. you just have a sandwich or a salad that is a light lunch right so it hasn't got a lot of calories in it it's not going to make you feel sleepy all right. And usually it's not going to take a long time to eat. <laughs> That's a light lunch. Uh -huh. And as we okay. said before, with it, with work, you can do some light work. Um, and light industry is then obvious because it's not heavy industry drilling for oil or making cars with huge mas machinery. It's maybe a factory that has very light machines, very simple, very basic industrial equipment. Can you think of an example of light yeah, industry? I, I think a light industry, for example, might be um, making, I don't know, um, maybe transforming paper into envelopes, for example, if you're making yeah, envelopes. Stationary. Stationary. That would be Papalaria. a light industry. Yeah, but a heavy industry is something like steel, making steel, making raw, like the, the big materials, making steel where you have these huge machineries and big furnaces. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Light industry is usually something that is manufacturing or packaging. Packaging things is a light industry. Like when you just put things in boxes, you know, that's a light industry. Or maybe making jewellery or making things that yeah. you know, by mm. hand as well. Yes. Um, breezes, brisa. So if there's a lovely breeze coming from the sea, but it's not wind, you can say it's a it's a light breeze. It's very it's muy suave. It, it's very soft and very gentle. Uh -huh. A lovely light breeze on a sunny day. And very pleasant as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, like it's a light breeze is nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, um, okay, we've got, I'm just looking at the comments and you're all correct, right? He said that uh, apparently Liviano means something with low weight, so not so heavy. I ah, think he meant okay. light. Uh -huh. yeah, and light lunch is like vegetables, that's true. Um, food industry could be light industry. Yes, I think so. I heard the food yeah. industry if, is yeah. a light industry. Um, and then... Uh, 
Okay, Jose is asking a very interesting question. Maybe you can put this up. Does the expression a light person exist? For instance, when I want to say that someone doesn't have a complicated personality, I would say no. Uh, I think because of the opposite, una persona pesada. Pesada. Like a, yeah, oh, I think que that's pesado where it is. Like no. a really, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't say, that doesn't translate literally no, to English. No. No. If you say a light person, I would understand that you do not weigh very much. Yes. Right? So a light person maybe weighs 50 kilos and a heavy person weighs 150 kilos. Yeah. So I, I, if you said light with person, we would probably imagine the weight of it. Light versus heavy. Mm -hmm. But not adjectives. in terms of personality. Mm -hmm. I've put some adjectives in the chat room that could be used for that kind of meaning, Jose Ignacio. You uh -huh. could say a happy-go-lucky person. You could say a laid-back person or an easygoing person would be the opposite of pesado in uh -huh. Spanish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, Anna said, a, a pesado is a pain in the neck. You're quite right. <laughs> well absolutely. done. I know, I know a, few, right. a few people like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> a few pains in the neck. Mm -hmm. And Leonel is asking, can we say light personality? Also, no. 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 Easy going, again. Easy going. He has an easy going personality. Uh -huh. Would mean that you're not so serious. Mm hmm and then we come to the last one and this is a bit unusual it's a bit hard to guess this one this one is called light relief now uh, how can I say it? relief in Spanish would mean alivio but I'm aware that not everybody's from Spain so it means when you uh, feel better about something so maybe something is very serious has been happening to you and you're very worried and when it the, the problem is solved, you feel relief. You feel, ah, oh, thank goodness, it's all worked out well. Now, that's the sense of relief. But when we say light relief, this means that the topic that we have been talking about is a pain in the neck. It's really been serious. And we want to stop hearing this serious topic. So in order to change the topic, we say, now, for a little bit of light relief, let's tell a joke, or let's go to the cinema, or let's have a beer. Let's have some light relief. So light relief in that sense means let's do something that's going to make us feel happy, that's going to make us feel less serious about things. So, uh, of course, at the moment in the news on the television, everything is bad. I was telling uh, Craig earlier, I said, I don't want to watch the news anymore. Everything on the news is bad. It's all COVID and anarchy in the America. There's nothing light. And, There's nothing light on the news. It's all heavy disasters. stuff. It's all really serious things. Yeah. It's, Typical beginning of the year news, because this happens every year, I think, as well. In January, they all give bad news, right? And so really, maybe, I hope, maybe you didn't want to watch the news right now. So you thought, let's have a bit of light relief and watch Craig and Lynn. Do you think they thought <laughs> that, Craig? <laughs> I hope so. Let's, let's, hope so. let's hope we're not being too heavy. I hope we're not being too serious for you. So a little bit of light relief. Minia has got a lovely word in Spanish, respiro. That's right. That's a little bit like, yeah, let's to, yeah. to have a bit of a respiro so that you can breathe again. Mm -hmm. Poco de respiro. Okay. There's All another right. compound. There's a compound noun with this kind of meaning as ligero, which is lightweight. If you call a person lightweight, that could be negative. For example, Lynn was mentioning um, beer before. If you go out with people who tend to drink a lot of alcohol and you just have a very small glass of beer or small glass of wine, you could call someone a lightweight. Mm -hmm. Like you're a lightweight. You're not drinking the same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, I think that also comes, Craig, from boxing, from the sport boxing. Yes. Because in boxing, the, there's different categories of boxers. And heavyweight, the, lightweight, light, heavy, lightweight, welterweight. Feather, featherweight, welterweight. And lightweight are for the, the, the men and women who do not weigh so much. So they are, they have lighter, they're lighter in weight. 
So, and then heavy weights are for the, the really big, heavy uh, uh, boxers. Uh -huh. yes. so maybe when you go out drinking, if somebody says you're a lightweight, they're trying to, to they're not paying you a compliment. Yeah, they say that you're not strong. Or, uh -huh. Exactly. Um, Lolu is just asking, L yeah. Lolu Lopez is just asking, can we use the word light relief for medicines? And you can. That's very, very good. We didn't know. We, we forgot about that one, Craig. Yeah. So if you have, you can say, this medicine will give you some light, light relief. relief. From the pain. From the pain. So uh, it will help you a little bit, a light relief from the pain. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Light also has uh, the meaning, if you're speaking about color of of claro in Spanish, there's blue, there's dark blue, which is oscuro, and there's the opposite, which is light blue. So what is, I mean, this is kind of a light blue shirt and Lynn's wearing a blue sweater. It's kind of a light blue sweater. Um, I don't have anything here. That, oh, yeah, that's light blue, isn't it? The top of this yeah, bottle of water, light. that's light blue, mm -hmm. uh, light brown. So you can use it as an adjective to add more description to a color. There's mm -hmm. another use of light. Mm -hmm. And then it can also be used as an adverb. Light mm -hmm. and lightly. Although um, I'm not quite sure what the difference is. I mean, you can say I travel light, but you can't say I travel lightly. No, That's interesting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can I knock think... lightly on the door, for example. But I think this is the difference now between we saw that the word light can mean heavy in weight or well, the opposite of heavy in weight right so it can mean something to do with weight but it also has another meaning which means not so um uh, not so hard not so severe not so strong yeah not so strong so there's a difference between weight and strength right yeah, so exactly. when you say i travel light it means that you don't travel with heavy bags you only have maybe your, a light bag to go onto the aeroplane. You don't check in a bag because you travel light. You just take a T-shirt, a change of underwear, and a toothbrush. That's to travel light. Right? Do you usually travel light? No. <laughs> <laughs> take everything with you. Of course. <laughs> I try. No, I do try to travel light. I do try, but I don't always succeed. I think mm -hmm. the philosophy is to pack your suitcase and then open it again and take out half of the half of the clothes. Yeah, and yeah, close yeah. It. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. I think it depends on where you travel, um, because I travel. If it, it depends, if I go by plane, I tend to travel light. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I go by car, I take everything that I can fit yeah. into the car. So, uh, <laughs> so I know when we go by car, we never travel light. But if we go by plane, I often travel light. And if I'm doing a trip where I have to carry my luggage, I definitely travel light. So if I go hiking, of course, you can't carry every day. You can't carry a lot of weight. So then I travel very lightly. Mm -hmm. Eva's got a nice question. Hello, Eva. She's saying, um, is... Well, going back to color, is light blue like a shade of blue? Um, not really. Well, um, I think when you talk about shades, Eva, you get more focused on many different colors. Light blue and dark blue divide the colors very roughly very approximately but when you talk about different shades of group there are a lot more aren't there it's kind of layers capas of color yeah you're talking about a spectrum of colors thank a you spectrum. that's the word i was that's looking for spectrum. so at one side of the spectrum you will have light blue at the other side of the spectrum, you'll have dark blue. And, and in the middle, blue. you'll have hundreds of different shades of blue. Uh -huh. But you can also say it's a light shade of blue. Yeah, if, yes, you can say it's or a light a dark shade, shade of blue. 
No, I know this very well because before Christmas, I, I had the, the painter came to decorate my house. And most of my house is white, but in the hall, I like a color. And I wanted to have a yellow color. Well, I had a yellow color and it was nice. And I mm -hmm. thought, great, I just need the same. So I went to the shop and I said, I want yellow. And she gave me in the shop a book and there were 50 shades of yellow <laughs> and i realized that i have i'm not an artist not 50, not 50 shades of gray 50 shades so of i yellow. look at the 50 shades of yellow and i just said oh, i don't know that one that one <laughs> so she mixed up the color and she gave it to me and uh, the painter painted it in the hall and it was horrendous it was <laughs> awful <laughs> it looked like easter chickens you know like easter at easter where you have that very very bright yellow on an easter card it was really really bright and I, we lasted two days and then i had to go back to the shop and i said you know what i'll have white so can you please give me white <laughs> and i got the paint and he had to come back and paint it white <laughs> because there were so many shades in between i thought i had chosen a light yellow but in actual fact it was it was very very strong mm -hmm. and what color is it now white white <laughs> i went back i thought it was too difficult it was too difficult to choose i couldn't do it <laughs> we've got some more we've got some more questions about color this is getting interesting so juan mm. lu is saying is light blue similar to soft blue mm. um no no, no. <laughs> Why not? I say no, no, no. I would it's say light no. blue, so it was soft. Because there can be shades of light blue, which yeah. mean they are not dark. And but some are soft talk, and some are not. Uh, yeah. When you talk about soft and and cold is the opposite, right? So a soft blue, it's a little bit like when we were talking about the bulbs that you put in the ceiling. Now you have warm light or you have white light. And warm gives a feeling of warmth. And if you say soft blue, you imply that it is warm, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's very agreeable, isn't it? A it's soft colour nice. is very it's warm. Pleasant. It's very, very it's pleasant. pleasant, very nice. Uh -huh. Because soft is a very positive word. It's a very positive word. And they say and that... Light, oh, sorry. Sorry, I think light is a neutral word. It doesn't convey that feeling of positivity, light blue. It's just descriptive. It just means it's not dark, <laughs> right? And cold blue would be the opposite of soft blue. So soft blue would be positive. Cold blue would be negative. And light blue is just neutral. What do you think of that? Do you like no, that? I, I agree. And if you think of the branding of Facebook, for example, the Facebook has a very soft blue corporate color, which mm -hmm. is warm and attractive because mm -hmm. Facebook want you to stay on the page mm -hmm. and they want you to stay with them. And the same reason, if you go to a fast food restaurant, the colors tend to be very aggressive, maybe bright red, because they don't want you to sit in the restaurant for a long time. Mm -hmm. They want you to eat and go. So the colors don't usually tend to be soft in fast food restaurants, but maybe they would be in an expensive restaurant because it's nice to relax and stay there for a long time. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. another question here about, oh, from Eva. Mm -hmm. I can't say your clothes are the same shade of blue. Do you mean our clothes? They're a similar shade of blue. They're not exactly the same yeah, shade as blue. Um, my my shirt is slightly darker blue mm -hmm. than Lynn's sweater. So they're not exactly the same shade. I but actually, you can say they're a similar shade. Mm -hmm. I'd like to just confuse you even more. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> my jumper is green. The problem is, is my webcam and my white light, it changes the colours. <laughs> you, you need to adjust your white balance. I need on to your have camera. To, the balance her because my actually my jumper is green. <laughs> the Minia says we're giving a master class of colours. We certainly are. Uh -huh. And but one you more are, just to just uh -huh. to confuse you more, Lynn, because uh -huh. well not confuse you, but to confuse me. Um there was a question, I think, from Christina. Where is it? Um she asked about Hugh. Oh, here it is, Christine. Oh. What about Hugh? 
Uh, now, Which hue, I think is, is tinte, no? Tonalidad. No, I, yeah. I think a hue is this is a, is a synonym of shade. Okay. Or, or tone, you can say a tone of color as well, a hue. But tone, you can use the word tone, a tonalidad, like you say in Spanish. Tone is usually for, in English, it can be for color. So it can be for visual things, but it can also be for audio, audio things. So you have tones in music, for example. But hue is only to do with visual. Hue is to do with color. You can't say a hue of music for some, for example, but hue is to do with colour. Ha! <laughs> well done. Thanks. I'll tell you something. I learned an awful lot about colour when I made my website. When I created my website, I said I, I'm not artistic at all. And I spent hours and hours and hours choosing photographs for the different pages and mm -hmm. the problem was the colors. It was the colors because to get colors that actually agree with each other <laughs> is, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And you should go and look at Lynn's website because it is lovely. Just to oh, remind yes. you, it's putitlightwith.com. <laughs> go and see what Lynn has done with her hues <laughs> and her tones and her um, different colors there. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Only positive feedback, please. I don't want any <laughs> negative feedback because I don't want to do it again. <laughs> okay, shall we continue? Yes, I'm a bit lost with the banners. Um, right, where okay. are we? Oh, yes, yeah. and there's another meaning of light, which means to give illumination or en energy. In, it could translate to Spanish as encender. For example, you can light a fire. If you're camping and you're in the countryside and you want to cook, you light a fire. Remember, as I said at the beginning, past is lit. It's an irregular verb. I lit a fire when we went camping. And you can light a cigarette. Uh, also, um, give me a light. Do you have a light, please? Excuse me, can I have a light? If you're a smoker, then you need to ask for a light. Can I have yeah, a light, Yeah, that, that's important because if somebody asks you, do you have a light? Can you give me a light? You don't give them a torch. You don't <laughs> don't give them a, a light. Don't switch on the light. That's not what they want. They want you to light their cigarette when they say, mm -hmm. have you got a light? They want you to light their cigarette with a cigarette lighter. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Um, more think, questions. Yeah. Um, We've Leonel says colors are a pain in the neck. My wife is a graphic designer oh. and she knows a thousand colors. Yeah, I'm the same, Leonel. I, I'm not yeah. very um, color literate. So no, I'm really no, pleased no. that Lynn is with me today. No, I'm not. I'm not. I want I want to meet Leonel's wife. That's what I need. I wish my <laughs> husband was your wife because <laughs> that would have helped me. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very sensitive to fonts text mm -hmm. fonts and i was looking for a long time this week to find a, a particular font a style mm -hmm. of font i wanted to write something but mm -hmm. I, i'm not really very good at designing and colors and and that kind of thing yeah, and bruno says we can also say to get off lightly exactly mm -hmm. yeah imagine you're stopped by the police for speeding in your car or speaking on your mobile phone don't do that and the police stop you and you think, oh, no, I'm going to get a fine. This is going to be a problem. And the policeman says to you, okay, this is a warning. I'll let you go. Don't do this again. This is a warning. I'm not going to fine you. You can say, well, I really got off lightly with that. I was very lucky. I escaped without a big punishment. So to get off lightly is to escape without punishment without consequences right. that brings us craig because the time's going on we have a quiz for you yes we do with some other phrases right and you can guess some things we have an, an idioms idiom, a vocab vocab quiz. quiz so this is going to work like this we'll give you an example sentence and three possibilities a b or c and you need to write in the chat room which do you think is the correct choice for example they had been going out for five years before she finally saw the light and they split up. So to see the light, does that mean 
A, she realized the relationship wasn't going anywhere. Does that mean B, she found religion? Or does that mean C, she had a premonition? Which is the best explanation for that sentence? They'd been going out for five years before she finally saw the light and they split up. Answers in the chat room, please. A, B or C? We've already got it. Juan Lu. There we are. A. Well done. <laughs> All right. So if you see the light, it means that you realize something. Uh huh. You understand something. Okay. Very good. You, you all got one. that. Next one. Yeah. So this one is if you are light fingered, what does that mean? To be light fingered. Remember, these are your fingers. To be light fingered. Does it mean A, you are very careful when you touch things? Does it mean B, you have a tendency to take things that aren't yours? Or C, you have slender, thin fingers? What does it mean if you are light fingered? Let's see if anybody can answer. Oh, difference of opinion this time. Francisca says A, Carlos says B, Chris Christine says A. B. Right, so we've got team A and B. And the correct answer is B. If you are light fingered, it means you steal things. Yep. You're a thief. <laughs> right? You are a thief, or another word, a nice big word, is a kleptomaniac. It's <laughs> not a kleptomaniac. So if you are light fingered, it means wherever you go, you tend to you tend to take things that aren't yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's light fingered. It doesn't mean that you are very careful when you touch things. No, no. <laughs> Next one, the expression on a lighter note, on a lighter note means to write something down on paper quickly, to play a musical instrument very quietly, or to be more humorous and not so serious. What does it mean to, on a lighter note, if you say, well, on a lighter note, are you writing something down? Are you playing a musical instrument or are you being more humorous? What do you think? Yeah, Juan Lu says like we own a rider. Yeah, that's that's a few years ago that she got <laughs> caught. She left a maniac, was she? <laughs> Stop lifting. Yeah, she was very light fingered. Yeah. Okay, well done. Right. Yes, everybody's got this one right, I think. C, well done. C means Very good. Well be humorous done. and not so serious. Remember earlier, we, we heard the word light relief, you know, which is also connected there, means you're not so serious, right? And on a lighter note is when you change the topic. You change the topic and you're going to talk about something nice. And your example, Lynn, was with the news. You get all the news and it's really bad and the world is coming to an end. And at the end of the news, on a lighter note, there's a chimpanzee in the zoo who's given birth to a baby. <laughs> Next one. If you if you get off lightly, if you get off lightly, we had this before. Do you leave a bus train or other means of transport without paying? Do you kiss someone you are attracted to to get off with someone? <laughs> but to go no further, <laughs> go no further, <laughs> just get to first base, as we used to say. Or do you receive a less severe punishment than you expect? There should be a T at the end there. Than you expect. expect. Now, this one, Craig described because somebody actually mentioned it and Craig actually explained it just before the quiz. So I hope you were paying attention. If you get off lightly, what is it? C, well done. C, uh -huh. yep. well done. <laughs> Fabiana, Eva, Eva's got it. Yep. Wonderful. Bruno's You're got listening. it. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay. Have we got Next one more? Mm -hmm. What's All right. this one? Right. So if you are out like a light, so I'm, he's out like a light, you can say. What does that mean? Does it mean A, you are unconscious or in a deep sleep? Does it mean B, you are enjoying an exciting night out with your friends? Or C, does it mean you are trying to move around in a dark room? So this is when somebody says, oh, he's out like a light. Or she's out like a light. 
What does it mean? A, unconscious or in a deep sleep. B, you're enjoying an exciting night out with your friends. Or C, you're trying to move around in a dark room. No idea, says Eva. Hammer's going for A. Carlos too. Mm -hmm. Carlos and Siam. And you're right. Uh -huh. If you yeah, are out a... like a light, it means you are really fast asleep. I had Which a very hard day yesterday. I worked really hard. I did a lot of exercise. And when I finally got to bed, I was out like a light. And very this expression. metaphor means like it's, it's easy to switch the light off and it disappears and then it's quiet. And that's what it means. But that one is a tricky one because, of course, we did have the word light sleeper, which yeah. means the opposite. So that one was a tricky one, right? So remember, light sleeper means you don't sleep very well. You, you wake up a lot. But if you are out like a light, it's a metaphor, meaning that when you switch the light off, it's that fast, that fast you fall asleep. That's what it means. Sometimes it helps to remember these expressions with a picture in your mind. If you imagine the light switch that we mentioned before, when you go to bed, you turn off the light. So you, you turn off the light switch. Just imagine that at the same time you turn off the light switch. That's when you go to sleep immediately at the same time. So the light switch is turning you off. Mm -hmm. And if you make, if you have that picture in your mind of you falling on the bed and sleeping immediately, that might help you connect with the expression to be out like a light. Because mm -hmm. it's we've a got, tricky one, that one. We've got two more. So right. to green light something, what does that mean? If you green light something, does that mean to make it environmentally friendly? to approve it, to give it the okay, or to develop it specifically for the army, for military use? What does that mean, to green light something? People seem to be going for B. Leona's gone for B. Eva's gone for B. And Christine's gone for B. Yes, you're right, to approve it. If you green light a project, project for example you go ahead you give it the okay if you green light um some work then you you can go ahead and you can do it mm -hmm. and that's from a metaphor it's the picture again this time of the traffic lights of course the green means you can go yeah so it's to approve it it, it says you can go okay the last one then yeah yep right so if you shed light on something what does it mean if it says, oh, that sheds a lot of light on that? Or I'm going to shed some light on that for you, that you could say. What does it mean? Does it mean, A, you increase the amount of light in your home? B, you make something that is heavy much lighter? Or C, you reveal something that was previously hidden? If you shed light on something, does that mean? Leona's gone for C. Eva's gone for C. Christine's gone for C. Any and more? You're, and you're right. It's C. You're right. It's you C. reveal something. So to shed light on, it's also like a picture. To shed means to throw sometimes, to shed, to yeah to throw out and you're throwing light onto something so when you throw light onto something you illuminate it and before people couldn't see it but now they can so that is you reveal something that was previously hidden now often um uh often in politics <laughs> uh, if you read articles in the newspaper they are always trying to shed light on the situation, yeah, or they shed in light on what has happened. There's a lot of articles in the news at the moment that are discussing what happened in America, in the Capitol building, and there are many journalists who are trying to shed some light on the situation, and they're trying to discuss why did it happen, what happened, how did it happen. Okay, they're all trying to shed light on what happened. Uh -huh. Yeah. Before we go and, and leave you, there's just one final thing. Let's go back to this one because Carlos in the chat room. Hi, Carlos. He's hi. a soldier and he's saying, well, 
can't this be C as well to develop it for military use? Because as a soldier, of course, if they say you've got the green light, but that means you can go ahead. You, mm -hmm. you can go ahead with the operation. So the operation has been approved. It doesn't literally mean to develop something for the military, for example, to develop a weapon or develop um, uh, a tank or a rocket. So I know that in the army they use the expression to green light an operation to go ahead with it, but that really means to approve it, to say that, yes, you can raid this country, for example, or you can do this operation. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, great. And we just got one last thing. Christine says another one to bring something to light is a synonym. It's a parallel phrase for to shed light on something or to bring something to light. Both of those mean exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Great. So, well. <laughs> you see, light is quite difficult sometimes, but anyway. <laughs> I hope we've shed light on some of the uses of light. And I that... hope. And I hope you see the light at the end of the tunnel. English is an end, you know, there is an end of the tunnel when you're learning English. So I hope that you see the light at the end of the tunnel. We hope that you all sleep or that you all, when you go to bed, you go out like lights tonight. <laughs> you go out like a light. And um, anything else? And we hope we were a little bit of light relief in this day and age of very bad news. <laughs> uh, let's hope so. And I hope that you'll come back with us next week. I, I hope Monica's going to be with us next week. I haven't spoken to her. I have been following Monica on Twitter and Facebook and I know she had a, a good Christmas from her photographs. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing Monica next week. And mm -hmm. thanks very much to Lynn for being with us this week. So okay, my tell pleasure. them about your website again, Lynn. All right. Well, my website has many shades of light in it <laughs> 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 because it's been designed with a lot of attention to the colors. Right. So put it like this is my website and I offer um, online classes to try to help people with English to achieve their specific goals. So I basically tailor make my courses for you. Um, and all of my classes are online. So I'm a pure online teacher now. And I have this lovely light, <laughs> which puts me in a good light, I hope, when I give my it, online classes. <laughs> it does. It puts you in a very good light. And um, my name's Craig from mansioningles.com, where we have lots of material that uh, is free, listenings and courses, um, general English courses. And we also have a store where you can buy courses if you want something more specific, like a pronunciation course or an exam course or a business course. We have courses for sale there as well. And if you don't know about the podcast, it's a weekly free podcast that you can find on inglespodcast.com or anywhere that you listen to audio like Spotify or iTunes or Google Podcasts. So if you haven't heard the podcast, then uh, you, uh, you you might want to go and uh, and try it and see if it will help you with your English. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for watching The Repeat on Facebook Live. Have a good week. Stay safe. And we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Uh -huh. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.